And we don't have to do such simple things as, you know, dumping a hot piece of metal into some water. We can also look at uh, chemical reactions. Um, and this is obviously done in real life. So um, for example, in this neutralization reaction, we have HCl reacting with NaOH um, to do this neutralization reaction. And that's gonna produce heat, right? So we can kind of heat, write heat as a product, but naturally we, we might wanna know how much. Right, we can do stoichiometry to figure out, you know, how much product we're going to get. But what about the heat? Um, we can also measure that through calorimetry. So, for example, if you have 100 mL of HCl, of one molar HCl, is mixed with 100.0 mL of one molar NaOH, if both of them start at 21.0 degrees Celsius and the mixture reaches 27.9 degrees Celsius, what is the approximate heat released by the reaction? Right, and then we're gonna assume that the density of the solution is 1.0 gram per milliliter and the specific heat is essentially equal to water right obviously the NaOH and the HCl might have a small effect but they're generally going to be about the same and so we do this question the same way we did the last one right we say that the Q of the reaction must be equal and opposite to the Q of the water it doesn't matter which side you put this negative sign on. Um, it'll work out either way. And so in this case, what we want is the Q of the reaction. And we know that the Q of the water is equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times the change of temperature in the water. Then we want to kind of think about um, all of our units here, our mass of our water. We're given some information there. Um, we have 100 mils plus 100 mils, that's 200 mils together. And we have the density of one gram per one milliliter. So we have 200.0 ml times one gram per one ml. We'll end up with 200 grams of water. So we can plug that unit right into there. The specific heat of water we of course know is this 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then if we think about what our delta T is, that's T initial or T final minus T initial, the solution uh, ended up at 27.9 and started at 21.0. To give us a change of 6.9 degrees Celsius. And then we just go ahead and plug in all of those units. And chug that into our calculator. You should get about negative 5,800 joules, which will be equal to about negative 5.8 kilojoules. Um, notice that this sign is negative for our Q of the reaction. And that makes sense, right? The water got hotter. So that means it gained energy. And so where did that energy come from? Well, it must have been released by the reaction or the reaction must have lost that energy. And so whenever we see a negative energy, that means that whatever we're looking at is losing that energy or that it's expelling it out to the system.